Hello everyone, myself Dr. Parth and today I am going to teach you a very important topic from pathology that is a leprosy which comes under the category infectious disease. Traditionally it is divided into tuberculoid and lepromatous type of leprosy. So this particular topic comes under competency number PA 10.3 in which students need to understand the definition and describe the pathogenesis and pathology of leprosy. So our learning objective according to competency is we will see the definition, mode of transmission, causative organism for the leprosy. I will discuss the classification of leprosy, pathogenesis, morphology and finally few of the MCQs. So first of all we will begin with definition. What do you mean by leprosy? So you know uh, leprosy is a chronic granulomatous inflammation. It comes under the category of chronic inflammation and particularly granulomatous inflammation. You know uh, Dr. Hansen discovered this causative organism and that's why the name of this disease is Hansen disease. So it is also known as a Hansen disease. You know it's a very slow progressive and destructive infection. It progresses slowly but very destructive. That's why I have put this cartoon, right? So causative organism, why leprosy occurs? So it's due to one of the bacterial organism that is Mycobacterium leprae. It is caused by bacteria known as a Mycobacterium leprae. And you know, it's a weak acid fast bacilli. It's not a strong acid fast bacilli like that of tuberculosis. It's a weak one, right? It cannot be cultured in an artificial media or the cell culture. It will proliferate. This particular Mycobacterium leprae will proliferate at very low temperature of our human skin. Right? It will grow at low temperature. And that's why, you know, for the experimental purpose, armadillo rate is used because they have a very low body temperature, 32 degrees centigrade. Right? So, it will proliferate at low temperature. Its cell wall contains mainly two particular antigen, phenolic glycolipid 1, PGLA1 and LAM antigens. The site of involvement in a leprosy is a cooler tissue. You know the lepra bacilli will grow at a cool tissue, cool temperature. So they doesn't grow at an axilla or growing, wherever temperature is high, right? It's a moist area, temperature is high, that's why they will not grow there or else they can grow over the skin. So leprosy can infect our ear lobe, right face like that of skin tissue. Peripheral nerve will be involved in a leprosy. If the patient is infected by leprosy, peripheral nerve is going to be affected and it can involve a mucous membrane, particularly nasal mucous membrane. So how leprosy will transmit from one person to another person? So from one person to another person, they will transmit by a aerosol they will transmit through a respiratory rate mainly by inhalation so the causative agent is mycobacterium lepra which will spread from a aerosol route from the upper respiratory tract by a inhalation inoculation also one of the mode and by the intimate contact with lepromatous leprosy patient the leprosy can be transmitted because in this particular patient lepromatous leprosy the bacterial load is very high but mainly it is spread by inhalation. Incubation period, you won't believe the incubation period of leprosy is 5 to 7 year. Means after acquiring the infection, the symptom will manifest after 5 to 7 year. Classification of leprosy. So it will traditionally classify in a three way. ridley joplin classification, WHO classification or Madrid classification. We will focus on upper two classification. So the most important classification of leprosy is Ridley Joplin 1996 classification that is based on our immune resistance to the bacteria. So immune resistance of host will determine the type of leprosy in this particular classification. It is widely accepted. So based on this classification, the leprosy divided into five categories, five types. At the extreme of edge, we have a lepromatous leprosy and at the lower end, we have a tuberculoid leprosy. If the host immune response is very strong, maximum immune response, if maximum immune response occurs to a mycobacterium lepra, 
then it is a tuberculoid leprosy. In a tuberculoid leprosy, immunity is at the best, right? But if your immunity is low, if immunity is not effective against the lepra bacilli, then the patient can develop lepromatous leprosy where the bacterial load is very high. And in a tuberculoid leprosy, bacterial load is very low. And in between these two extreme categories, there are three different categories, particularly based on the histomorphological appearance, borderline tuberculoid, borderline, lepros borderline leprosy, or borderline lepromatous. So, five types of leprosy is seen. All right. Now, WHO classification. World Health Organization classification of leprosy include posibasillary leprosy or multibasillary leprosy. So, these two categories will correlate with ridley joplin classification as well. So, all the tuberculoid category, particularly borderline tuberculoid, tuberculoid leprosy, will come under the posibasillary leprosy. Posi means less number of bacilli. So, obviously, immunity is high in a tuberculoid leprosy. So, in a tuberculoid type of leprosy, bacterial load will be low and so it is posibasillary leprosy. But, according to ridley joplin in a lepromatous, borderline lepromatous and borderline leprosy, bacterial load is high and that's why in a WHO, they will be categorized in a multibacillary leprosy. So, in short, a bacteriological index, which we will discuss later on, a bacteriological index is 0 to 1 in a posibacillary leprosy, while bacteriological index is high in a multibacillary leprosy. So, in a multibacillary leprosy, the skin lesions are more. Right? In a posibacillary skin lesion is 2 to 5, but here in a multibacillary leprosy, the skin lesion will be more than 5. Uh, there will be increasing now involvement and thickening as the bacterial load increasing. So, in a multibacillary, now thickening is more. Alright. So, what would be the definition of leprosy case clinically? So, WHO expert committee on a leprosy in a 2010, which was the 8th meeting, it defines this. Case of leprosy means individual who has not completed the course of treatment and at least one of the following signs should be present, right? If they have taken the treatment, then they are not leprosy case. So, which signs should be present? So, one sign is that patient will have hypopigmented or erythematous skin lesion with a loss of or impairment of sensation. The lesion will be hypopigmented or erythematous and the sensation will be lost. There will be involvement of peripheral now which will be demonstrated by sensory impairment and it will be thickened. So, sensory examination now, examination, neurological examination will reveal now thickening. And slit skin smear test will be positive for acid fast basilite. So, that is the case. So, mainly you should have skin lesion, now involvement and AFB positivity. Alright. So, what do you mean by bacteriological index? We know that bacteriological index will be low in posibacillary while that of high in a multibacillary. So, bacteriological index means number of bacilli in a every field. Whenever you do a spatial stain like that of white ferrico stain or AFB stain, you know, this is the uh, categorization of uh, index. So, whenever you observe the bacilli in a microscopy during histopathology, right? If you observe 1 to 10 bacilli in a every 100 field, then it is 1 plus. 2 plus means 1 to 10 bacilli in every 10 field. 3 plus index means 1 to 10 bacilli in a each field. But in a each field, in a every field, if you observe 10 to 100 bacilli, if load is increasing, then it is, it is 4 plus. If you observe 100 to 1000 bacilli in every field, then it is 5 plus. And if you observe many clump of bacilli in a every field, especially more than 1000, then it is a case of 6 plus bacteriological index, which is usually observed in histioid and lepromatous leprosy. Alright. So, what is the pathogenesis of leprosy? So, you know, leprosy is a cell-mediated immunity reaction. It is a chronic granulomatous inflammation. So, obviously, it will come under category type 4 hypersensitivity reaction. Because the chronic granulomatous inflammation seen in a delayed hypersensitivity reaction, particularly type 4 hypersensitivity. So, the response will be mediated by Th1 lymphocyte. We know that uh, 
If you don't remember my lecture on T lymphocyte, then you can check the playlist and see my video on T lymphocyte. You know, the T lymphocyte, particularly T helper lymphocyte divided into three categories, Th1, Th2 and Th17. So, this particular response mediated by T helper 1 lymphocyte, right? And in a tubercular depressy, this, rep this response is maximum. Immunity working at a maximum. So, hypersensitivity will be more, right? So, maximum response seen in tubercular depressy, while the lowest response will be seen in lepromatous leprosy. And that's why in a lepromatous leprosy, the bacilli will not get removed. And so, you will have high bacteriological index, right? So, this is a very beautiful diagram given in a Rambas Rai book uh, for undergraduate. You know, uh, this particular diagram initiates a cytokine mediated inflammation, particularly type 4 hypersensitivity mechanism. So, as we know, leprosy is a delayed hypersensitivity reaction, particularly type 4 hypersensitivity. It's a chronic granulomatous inflammation. So, you need to understand how this particular uh, granulomatous inflammation develops. So, you know, in this particular hypersensitivity, uh, whenever the antigen enter into our body, this is antigen, uh, you know, it will be presented to the T lymphocyte with the help of antigen presenting cell. You know, the bacteria cannot be directly recognized by CD4 T helper cell. So, antigen presenting cell will do that function. In our body, B lymphocyte, macrophage and the dendritic cell are working as an antigen presenting cell. They will present this antigen to the nave CD4 T lymphocyte. So, here I have written nave T helper lymphocyte means they are not immunologically competent. You know, uh, they are not antigenically stimulated lymphocyte. Once they have an antigen exposure, this nave lymphocyte converted into T helper effector cell. And you know, after presentation to the antigen, this nave lymphocyte can be converted into three type of T helper effector cell, either Th1, either Th2 or Th17. We, are not, uh, we will not deal with Th2 or Th17 in this lecture. I have already described it in my T lymphocyte lecture. We are main concerned about Th1 response. So, antigen presenting cell present antigen to the name CD4 T helper cell. So, they will convert it into effector Th1 cell and this T helper 1 lymphocyte will secrete cytokine, particularly interferon gamma. Now, this particular cytokine having an effect of stimulation of macrophage. They will activate a macrophage. We know that macrophage are the phagocytic cell. So, after stimulation by interferon gamma, the macrophage will increase their bactericidal activity. Means, they will kill more bacteria. And, you know, they will secrete more and more cytokines. In, in short, I want to say that Th1 cell secrete interferon gamma which will activate a macrophage. So, the macrophage are activated in type 4 hypersensitivity and this activation is maximum in a tuberculoid leprosy. Right? So, what will be the morphology of tuberculoid leprosy? Let's discuss it in a detail. It's a less severe form. We know that tuberculoid leprosy is a granulomatous inflammation, bacteriological load is less. <coughs> You know, the number of lesions will be only single or very few lesions. The site of involvement could be face, extremities or trunk. The type will be the localized involvement and the lesion is well demarcated as you can see in this diagram. It's a red or hypopigmented patch. Now, involvement also can be seen in tuberculoid leprosy. Right? It's a dominating feature. And you know, the nose will be surrounded by a chronic granulomatous inflammation. And because of nerve involvement, there will be loss of sensation in an affected area. Obviously, due to gradually atrophy of skin and muscle could be developed, which will eventually lead to development of ulcer formation. Consequences could be contracture, paralysis due to nerve involvement or auto-amputation. This is a scene in very severe form of tuberculosis depressing. Okay, so what will be the microscopy? As we have seen, you know, the pathogenesis involved activation of macrophage. So, obviously, we will see activated macrophage in a microscopy. So, if you take a biopsy and do the histopathological examination, granulomatous inflammation will be seen. 
the classical granulomatous non caseating granuloma formation will be seen we will see it in a diagram as well later on in the slide and you can apply one special stain that is a fight ferrocostein for the demonstration of lepra bacilli right for the lepra bacilli demonstration fight ferrocostein can be seen and in tuberculosis leprosy as the bacterial load is very low bacteriological index is 0 to 1 barely any bacilli will be visible in this stain because in tuberculosis leprosy load is very uh, low right the perineural lymphocytic response will be seen as it is chronic inflammation there will be strong t helper lymphocyte response so this is the diagram of photomicrogram <coughs> a uh, schematic diagram of uh, tuberculosis leprosy uh, you know the macrophage are activated in a tuberculosis leprosy in a granulomatous inflammation so because of activation of macrophage they will get converted into boot shape cell you can see that it is all are boot or slipper shape right they will elongate so that is known as a epithelioid cell and in the center they will have indentation right so boot shape elongation of macrophage will occur due to activation by interferon gamma particularly activation by th1 th1 secrete interferon gamma which will activate a macrophage so they will convert it into epithelial cell and this epithelial cell will combine together and they will form a multi nucleated cell you know if all this combine together then their cytoplasm come together nucleus come together and they will take a shape of like this so if the nucleus is arranged in a or shoe shape uh, this cell is known as a langhans giant cell so langhans giant cell is nothing but a fused epithelioid cell right so that is the and you can see a lymphocytic response as well in a tuberculosis leprosy so that is a photo my that is the schematic diagram of tuberculosis leprosy see this is the tuberculosis leprosy here you can see a horseshoe shape arrangement of nucleus in a giant cell so this is the langhans giant cell right it formed due to fusion of epithelial cells all right <clears throat> the same diagram you know uh, th1 when activated they will secrete interferon gamma and they will activate a macrophage so once the acro macrophage are activated they will be elongated and they will uh, they will be known as a epithelial cell if they fuse together they will form a giant cell right the lymphocytes are seen and obviously it is as it is chronic inflammation there will be ring of fibrosis so this is the granuloma right it is seen in granulomatous inflammation so you can be asked in a exam to draw a diagram of granuloma so this is a granuloma right uh, there will be fibroblast lymphocyte activated macrophage but that is known as epithelial cell and if they join together they will form a giant cell so these structures are seen in granuloma you need to draw this diagram it can be ask ask in a mcq as well all right so that was all about the tuberculosis leprosy in which the immune response is maximum now let's discuss about the morphology of lepromatous leprosy so in a lepromatous leprosy the immunity is very low right our immunity is not working so macrophage can't able to remove the lepra bacilli that's why bacteriological load is very high it's a most severe form you know immunity is low and the site involvement are particularly skin peripheral nerves testes and some other tissue so first of all let's see the skin involvement by lepromatous leprosy so in a lepromatous leprosy the patch is not seen right in a tuberculosis usually patch is seen but here there could be formation of nodule as well obviously the affected lesion is a hypostatic means uh, there is a loss or affection of the sensation in that particular area in a severe case loss of sensation is there anesthetic skin lesion in initial stage it could be macular papular but eventually there will be nodular skin lesion and it can ulcerate and particularly if this nodule develop over the face then they will combine together you know in the face this multiple nodule over the face and eyebrow combine or coalesce together to produce a leonine faces right that appearance is looks like lion this is the leonine appearance like it look like lion the multiple nodules form over the face and eyebrow they will coalesce together to form a leonine faces because of which the um, there will be loss of eyebrow and the eyelashes right
which is known as a luciocyne. So luciocyne means loss of hydroid eyelaces due to nodule formation in an apromatous leprosy. Cooler area of skin usually involved, particularly earlobe, wrist, elbow, knee, feet, particularly involved in lepromatous leprosy. As we have discussed, lepra bacilli grow at a low temperature. That's why these sites are affected commonly. Okay. Peripheral nerve and testes also can be involved in lepromatous leprosy. Particularly, ulnar and perineal, perineal nerve is involved. So, loss of sensation in that affected area. You know, uh, the supplying area of these uh, nerves will be affected. Particularly over the hand, right? In a severe case, testes could be involved, which involves the seminiferous tubule and that can lead to permanent development of sterility. You know, patient could be sterile. They can't uh, uh, produce a child. That's uh, because of involvement of seminiferous tubule. You know, sperm production is affected. Other side that could be involved is uh, anterior chamber of eye, which can lead to blindness. You know, if upper airways are involved, there could be nasal discharge or voice changes. So, according to the site of involvement, there will be there would be clinical sign and symptom, right? Now, microscopy. So, see, in a lepromatous leprosy, unlike that of tuberculate leprosy, granuloma formation is not seen. Here, the predominant predominant structure that is seen is a virtual cell, that is a macrophage, lipid-laden macrophage is seen, right? They are not activated, so epithelial cell, giant cell are not seen. We will see classic macrophages in a dermis, right? Usually it involves skin, so if you take a biopsy and do histopathological examination, then macrophage are seen. The involved epidermis is thin with a loss of red edges. And Grand's zone is seen, which I will show you in the next slide in the diagram. It's a clear, narrow, uninvolved zone in a dermis. Right? And you know, in the dermis, there is an aggregation of uh, macrophages that is known as a lepra or virtuose. And that, uh, that may be filled with globi. Globi means uh, multiple bacilli fused together to form a cigarette shaped structure, that is globi. So, see, this is the histopathology photomicrograph of and schematic diagram of lepromatous leprosy. Here, the predominant cell in a microscopy, if you do the histopathology examination from a biopsy, here you can see a lots of macrophage. See, this is the schematic diagram. Here you can see a macrophage, right? The macrophage is identified by lipid laden cytoplasm. In the cytoplasm, you can see a clearing. That's because of lipid, right? So they are known as a formi cell, lepra cell, or virtual cell. So you, you can see a nodules of macrophage in a dermis. And these collected nodules will separate the epidermis, and so there is a formation of clear zone in between. So, between epidermis, this is epidermis, and dermis, you can see a clear gray zone that is known as a Grange zone, right? That is known as a Grange zone. This is a classical feature of lepromatous leprosy. So, mainly you will see macrophage, nothing else. You can't see lymphocytic response because immunity is not working well in a lepromatous leprosy. So, there will be low immune response, so no lymphocyte is seen, right? In tuberculosis, leprosy, lymphocyte seen because immunity is high. Here only macrophages are seen and they are trying to remove the bacilli but they can't because immunity is low. So see again the grains shown, the thinning of epidermis and if you observe carefully there is no reteriges. So the reteriges are lost in a lepromatous leprosy. There will be nodular collection of macrophages. All are the macrophages, right? Extensive infiltration of dermis by a macrophage and no lymphocyte are seen. All right. Modified Jaden stain that is known as a fight ferrico stain can be used for the demonstration of this bacilli. So here you can see a demonstration of lepermatous bacilli by FF stain. In a fight ferrico stain, you can see this bacilli that will stain is a pink color, right? Red pink color will be uh, seen if bacilli are present. So you can see a uh, many bacilli here with. They are present within the macrophage, right? Obviously, the macrophage doing phagocytosis. So, within macrophage, you will see the cells. You will see the bacilli. And they can arrange in a parallel fashion sometime. That will form a cigarette in pack-like appearance. If these all bacilli fuse together, you know, if uh, 15 to 20 bacilli fuse together or more, if fuse together, they will form a cigarette in pack-like appearance. Appearance, like right? This is known as a globi. That is known as a globi. Right? And these are also known as a red stamper as they stain red pink. Right? 
and you know this is uh, this particular photo micrograph is of lapramidus leprosy it in multi basilary leprosy lapramidus leprosy is such a tremendous load of basilar i see all right in borderline tuberculoid you know the features are borderline i mean no full fledged granuloma is seen that's why it's a borderline tuberculoid while in a borderline lapramidus uh, only histiocytes and along with few lymphocytes are seen that's why it is a borderline lapramidus right but uh, you need to focus only for the morphology of lapramidus and tuberculoid leprosy right all right so how will you diagnose the leprosy at the nut cell so first you will take a clinical feature Uh, you will take a clinical history right and observe for particular signs so if any hypopigmented uh, patch is present with loss of senses and then it could be leprosy right and in sensory examination if no thickening is present then also you need to suspect leprosy and if you feel such abnormal area no thickened or uh, hypopigmented skin lesion then you can take a biopsy from that area and send it for histopathological examination and fight phagocytin so that will be conclusive for diagnosis uh you know that this demonstration can be done in a slit skin smear as well so what is slit and scrap method to take a skin smear so you know via thin incision over the skin we prepared a smear and uh, demonstrate the bacilli by ff staining in which the with the thumb and index finger the skin is pinched very tightly and very small incision is put and you know the smear is prepared so that is a slit and scrap method in which ff uh, stain can be done to demonstrate the basic line obviously molecular method can be done like that of rt pcr to demonstrate the basic line antigen right it's a molecular testing we uh, uh, we test the dna of the basic line right but uh, this technique will not differentiate between live or dead bacilli right and uh, sometimes you can detect the igm antibody as well against the cell one antigen of lepra bacilli particularly antibody against pgl1 so that can also be sometime diagnostic modality the main one is uh, you know histopathology examination and ff stain okay so at the nut stain how will you differentiate between tuberculoid and lepra mitis leprosy so this is the master table chart that will show the difference between these two leprosy so in a tuberculoid and in a tuberculoid leprosy the skin lesion would be 2 to 5 but in lepromatous the knee lesion would be multiple as well as nodular and greater than 5 lesion is seen no involvement seen in both but uh, thickening is more in a lepromatous leprosy in a microscopically granuloma formation is seen in tuberculoid leprosy while in a lepromatous leprosy the dermis is filled with lepra cell which is nothing but a macrophage right so main macrophage is seen in lepromatous leprosy while here granuloma is seen grains zone obviously seen in lepromatous leprosy it's not present in tuberculoid bacteriological index will be low in tuberculoid and will be more especially greater than 1 if bacteriological index is greater than 1 then obviously you are dealing with a case of lepromatous leprosy T cell immunity will be highest in tuberculoid leprosy immune response is more while here immune response is low T cell immunity is low so obviously infectivity high bacterial load is seen in lepromatous leprosy while low load is seen in tuberculoid leprosy the prognosis is very poor because the bacterial load is high in lepromatous leprosy while in tuberculoid leprosy bacterial load is low so prognosis is good so these are some golden points you know we have a two classification system of leprosy that is lepromatous and tuberculoid leprosy in a tuberculoid immune response is maximum in lepromatous immune response is low ff stain will demonstrate the lepra bacilli right these are the side that can be in both and the leprosy is a delayed hypersensitivity type 4 reaction in a tuberculoid leprosy granuloma formation is seen while in lepromatous leprosy nodular correction of macrophage is seen in dermis so that's all about the leprosy right i hope it make your fundamental clear so now let's discuss few mcq 42 year male having complaint of loss of sensation over skin area biopsy reveal nodular correction of macrophage with ff stain positivity what could be the cause so here the clue is that loss of sensation so it could be leprosy biopsy reveal nodular correction of macrophage so you could deal with lepromatous leprosy case right 
and FF stain is positive, so yes, it is a case of Lepermatous Raptacy, in which mainly macrophage is seen in dermis. Globa is seen in which type of leprosy? So obviously globa is seen where the bacterial load is high. They will combine together and they will form a cigarette impact like that of appearance. So it's seen in Lepermatous leprosy. Which leprosy having best immune response? So answer is clear cut tuberculosis. Which of the following is not included in a multi-basillary leprosy? So, multi-basillary multi leprosy dealing with lepromatous, right? They are, that is lepromatous leprosy. So, obviously, tuberculoid is not come under multi-basillary. In tuberculoid leprosy, the bacterial load is low. So, it comes under posi-basillary leprosy. These are my references for the today's lecture. I hope it make your fundamental clear about the leprosy. It's a very important topic for undergraduate students. After a tuberculosis, uh, this is most important topic in a granulomatous inflammation. So thank you very much and I will be right back with a new video till then. Take care friends, students and bye bye. Thank you.